Hi everyone and welcome to a special presentation we have today on the costumes of medieval times, clothes that people might have worn at Dundonald Castle during the time of Robert I. This presentation was very kindly put together by our castle volunteer tour guide and education volunteer Liz Kirby and it's read by our education officer Blythe Patterson. In medieval times, rich and poor people wore the same types of clothes, but the materials were very different. Everyone, both men and women, rich and poor, wore the following. Pants, called braise or slots. Leggings, called chaussée, tied with tape. An under tunic, called a chance. A belt of leather or cord. An outer tunic, called a blio. A cloak with a fur-lined hood called a mantle, a head covering, shoes of leather or stiff cloth, and wooden overshoes for winter. Getting dressed in braids or slops, i.e. pants. Both men and women wore braids. Braids were like baggy shorts made from soft cotton or linen. They were held up by a fabric belt tied around the waist. If you were rich, your braids were washed often, but if you were poor, you probably wore them many times before they were washed. Chassis or leggings. Chassis were made from soft cloth or thicker, warmer cloth for the winter. They were not joined at the top. There was one for each leg. The chassis were tied to the belt, which held up the braise. The strings which tied them together were called tapes. The braise would have been tucked into the top of the chassis. All men wore chaussées in the winter, but poor men may not have worn them in the summer. Women may not have worn them under long tunics. Chains or under tunic. The chains was made of cotton or wool and was worn by both men and women. Chains for a man was usually short while women wore longer chains. In summer, poor people often wore only the chains over their braids and chaussées to help them keep cooler as they worked on the land. A belt of leather or cloth may have been worn around the chains, as you see the picture of the woman here. Blio, or outer tunic. This is where clothing became very different for rich and poor. For poor people, the blio would have been made from coarse cloth in dull colors. For men, it would have been short, maybe long enough to hang just above the knees, but for women, the blio was floor length. A leather or cord belt was worn round the waist and over the blio, and a purse may have hung from this. The blio either had long sleeves which were close fitting or had no sleeves. Women often tuck their long blios into their belts when they worked in the fields. For rich people, the blio would have been made from fine cloth in bright and rich colors and it was trimmed with gold or silver braid or with ermine. The blio would have been short for men but floor length for women. A belt was often worn round the waist over the blio, this made of leather or may have been made of silver chains with jewels attached. The blio either had long sleeves or no sleeves, again, and women's blios often had very wide necklines and sometimes very wide and long sleeves. There were many different styles of blio and many different fabrics. A mantle or cloak. For poorer people, the mantle would have been made from coarse, heavy cloth and may have been lined with rabbit fur for extra warmth. The mantle may have had a hood attached or a separate hood called a chaperone may have been worn. For the rich, mantles were made from satins, silks, and patterned brocades. They were lined with expensive fur such as ermine and were edged with gold and silver braid. Head coverings for women and men were very elaborate. For ordinary people, head coverings were fairly simple. Women wore a cloth wrapped around their heads. Men wore a chaperon, hood, or a small cloth hat. As you can see in these images, head coverings for rich women were very elaborate and often bizarre. Meanwhile, head coverings for rich men could be just as elaborate. Footwear for all. Shoes were made of leather or stiff cloth such as felt. Richer people often wore long pointed shoes and men sometimes wore high boots. 
Ordinary people wore close-fitting shoes or went barefoot in the summer. In the winter months, wooden overshoes could be fitted over a leather shoe to help with walking in the mud. Clothes for rich people began to change in design more often in medieval times as fashion changed. All clothes were handmade from cloth which was woven and embroidered. Girls from rich families were taught to embroider at an early age, although they would have likely bought the cloth they used for their clothes and not woven it themselves. Clothing for peasants changed very little in design over the years. Clothes for peasants needed to be functional, allow them to work easily, and keep them warm. When clothes became too worn for adults to wear, they would have been cut down to make clothes for children. Girls of peasant families would have been taught to spin wool and weave the cloth to make simple clothes for them and their families. We have here a glossary of terms of some of the clothing worn during medieval times as processed by historyofeuropeanfashion.wordpress.com. I'll leave on this slide for a couple of minutes so that you can peruse the various items of clothing. We've put here some of the sources used to put together this presentation, as well as a list of further reading for anyone that's especially interested in the subject of medieval clothing. Thank you so much for watching this video. Again, my name is Blythe. I'm the Education Officer at Dundonald Castle. This presentation was put together for us by our volunteer tour guide and education volunteer, Liz Kirby. If you enjoyed this video, please consider going to Dundonald Castle's website or our Facebook page and making a small donation to the education program so that we can continue to make these videos for you while we're not on site. Thank you so much.